Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Resident Evil 5 Co-op which has been brought to you by MuchGames.ca and of course it's the European Power with El Pagrodos and... Samurai TX And we're back in action It's been a long while but we're back! Finally! Indeed And uh, the reason why it's taken such a long time is because of reasons Things have come up and... Uh, Oops. <laughs> Things that happen and come on. <laughs> Chris just does one in nothing these days. We need to find out about Jeff. Yeah. What a rude guy. Let's see what we can dig out. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> He's waited for too long. Alright, we've investigated these flowers. Where's that feel? Also, as you might have noticed on my screen, is that I've changed the costume to the uh, heavy metal costume. And I'm still in my um, little red riding hood costume. Yep. And fun fact, we actually tried to record this episode uh, before, but I don't remember what happened, but something... Oh yeah, now I remember. Uh, somehow Samurai disconnected, so uh, we decided it was better to uh, restart than to continue on from uh, the point where we disconnected. Yeah, that is right. Okay, here's a document. A clipboard with some old and new documents attached to it. Construction supervisor's log. So we finally kicked the Endipaya from the ruins they were scatting in. Squatting in, I mean. I heard it was just to get this flower field, but that's the least of my concerns right now. One thing I do know is that construction here has been a colossal headache. Trying to build something among these ruins is almost impossible to begin with. And just to get started we had to change the groundwater channels. That means the flower bed wasn't getting irrigated properly. And now the flowers are dying. And to top it all off, I have the head researcher Brandon breathing down my neck. He says he wants the facilities to be at least three times bigger than originally planned. So after that got approved, they fired the supervisor before me, Peter. Not sure why though, maybe he looked at them wrong or something. If I let these flowers die, the same thing will happen to me. I can't help but sympathize with poor Petey, working with these science types is a pain in the ass. I hope we find a new water source soon. Our surveys so showed that there might be some groundwater 500 meters or so down. That's pretty deep, so we'll probably have to use that new pump system the Fabio company makes. Hopefully that will work, but w with how everything has went so far, I'm sure something will go wrong. The only problem is that I have no idea when I'll be getting these new pumps. Even best case scenario, there's no way we'll get these new pumps in here and set up before the years out. It looks like we just have to use old fashioned manpower to fetch water for these flowers so they don't die. Looks like I'm going to be spending the last Christmas of the 60s away from my family in a dank dark cave, playing gardener for some flowers. Ain't life a bitch. The documents following this is newer. Administration log. The pumps are properly irrigating the progenitor flowers, but they require a lot of maintenance. Umbrella installed these pumps over 30 years ago. It's a wonder that they still even work. The tank that filtered the water is barely holding up. We need to replace these pumps as soon as possible. In a lucky turn, I found a log of Umbrella's construction supervisor. It said the pump system here was designed by a company called Fab... Fabiano. I think we use Fabiano pumps in our natural resource development division. I'll talk to Mr. Irving, the foreman at the oil plant, and see if we can get some new pumps from him. And there we go. A long one. There's another dog. Come on! Here. And share a response to Chris. <laughs> from Chief Researcher Brandon's Journal Number 1. 1966. December's 4th. <clears throat> Mr. Spencer once spoke of a flower called the Stairway to the Sun. Supposedly this flower would give the person who consumed it incredible abilities. Everyone thought it was nothing more than a rumour or legend that Mr. Spencer was telling us, but later research would prove us wrong. The first person to recognise the valid validity of that story was my teacher, Dr. James Marcus. He hypnotized... he, he hypothet hypothesized that a virus, Perito unknown, might exist that could be that could alter DNA. 
The man was so perspicuous. His hypothesis turned out to be correct. The virus discovered in that flower was labelled progenitor. For three months in Africa we worked diligently, fretted over results and star and starved off attacks from the Nidipaya. After such time our efforts were finally rewarded. Even Dr. Marcus, who until yesterday looked exhausted, was in good spirits. He wants to return home as soon as possible, to delve deeper into his research. I feel the same way. I want to learn the secrets of this progenitor virus as soon as possible. 1967, February 12th. We've hit the metaphorical brick wall. We brought the progenitor flower back from Africa and attempted to cultivate it here. The initial culture samples of the progenitor virus have not shown DNA altering characteristics. We cultivated the flower to mass produce the progenitor virus. At first, everything proceeded smoothly. The plants were strong and grew quickly. In a short amount of time, they flowered. But here is a major when the major problem surfaced. The flowers did not contain the progenitor virus. Perhaps the environment in which they have grown triggers the development of the virus. This matter must be investigated further. March 23rd. We've made no progress. We've tried cultivating the flower under different conditions. But with no luck in triggering development of the virus itself, thus far we've tried changing the soil, water, temperature, and light exposure in all with no success. I got into a heated debate with Dr. Marcus about the direction this research was taking. During that debate, Mr. Spencer interjected some foolhardy notion of starting a company. Without the progenitor virus, there's no point in starting a company. Does he not see that? It's all pointless. And that's it. And Chris was just murdering a little um, gem. He was a yelling yeah, hurry, surprisingly. I found it on a new uh, cave wall, actually. So uh, I, I saw it blinking, so I shot it down. Hmm, what's in this door? I hope it's puppies. <laughs> I sure hope it's not Chris's blood. Another document. What is this? From Chief Researcher Brandon's Journal Number 2. 1968. We wasn't born yet. April 15th. It's been over a year since we've had any breakthroughs. That's why Dr. Marcus and I decided to return to Africa. We can no longer continue our research without the progenitor virus. I know those routine attacks by the Nidipaya are really going to rack my nerves, but for the sake of our research, I will persevere. In the face of my foreseen dismay, it was Mr. Spencer who, dis who provided the answer. If you're worried about Nidipaya, then we will just have to remove them from an equation. I can only imagine from the look of shock on our faces. The idea never occurred to us. It was quite an arti a typical solution to our problem. But it seemed to be only the only option available. Dr. Marcus and I tried to... Dr. Marcus and I decided to try Mr. Spencer's plan. August 19th. Finally, some good news. We learned that they were able to chase the Nidipire off their land. The land we acquired only amounts half of those underground ruins. But if it includes the area where the progenitor flower grows, then there should be no issues. Mr. Spencer said he plans to construct research facilities at the site, which will expedite our research into the virus. We hastily made our preparations to depart for Africa, but Mr. Spencer suggested that Dr. Marcus stay in Raccoon City to take over the training center. We were initially taken aback by the request but we soon realized it was the logical course of action. Dr. Marcus needs a calm environment to properly conduct his research. If he were in Africa, there would be no proper facility for him to use at this time. I just hope the African research facilities get built soon. So now I will go alone to Africa and send back the samples of the progenitor virus to Dr. Marcus. Both Dr. Marcus and Mr. Spencer agree to this best course of action. I have to start making preparations to go. I have a feeling I'll be pretty busy starting tomorrow. September 29th. I've been, Af I've been in Africa for two weeks now. It's a good thing Dr. Marcus isn't here. 
This place is far from being a paradise of research and scientific study. These so-called research facilities are nothing more than a bunch of tents, and we have to employ armed soldiers to keep them in the pirate bay. But the thing that gets on my nerves is the most of it sounds of the construction for the real research facilities. How am I supposed to concentrate on research when everything is threatening to drive me insane? I'm trying to I'm just trying to concentrate on extracting virus samples from the progenitor flower so I can send them to Dr. Marcus. Hopefully if I can focus on my work, I can remain sane in this godforsaken place. 1969. June 15th. The research facilities are finally completed. This is the real Umbrella Africa Research Center, not just some pile of tents. But I've come to the realization in the past nine months, the facilities are too small for our needs. We need to make them larger, more suitable for research. Then we can fill them with more talented researchers. This place needs more of our front line in our progenitor virus research. Our results would do great service to Dr. Marcus and his viral research. In a rare turn of events, that old skin Flint Spencer actually agreed with me on this. And that was it. Yep, now let's power on this computer and see what's on it. It's Ruppels, the operating software. <sighs> uh, Research Center Director Brandon's Journal, 1998, November 16th. We've closed down the Research Center. It's strange, but I don't really care. I'm indifferent to the whole thing. I feel the same way as when I heard that the Arclay facility in Raccoon City were destroyed. When did, become, I, when did I become so apathetic? I spent every waking moment researching and extracting the progenitor virus. Everything I did was for Dr. Marcus. Actually, when I think about it, I probably stopped caring the day I heard he di had died all those years ago. I didn't feel angry or happy or even shocked. I felt nothing at all. It was as if all my emotional emotions just shut down. I just kept sending out samples of the progenitor virus to all of Umbrella's laboratories. I was just an automated machine reporting to Umbrella's headquarters every time one of my subordinates made a breakthrough or discovered something new. I was like a zombie, ambling through life, no thoughts, no feelings. And now the research center where I've spent half my life is closed. I really don't care one way or another. It's probably all for the best. Perhaps it is too late to have any semblance of a life again. Sounds depressing. Very depressing. He felt nothing Here's another at one. all. Nothing at Telegram all. Telegram from James Marcus. T-Virus development a success. January 13th, 1978. J. Marcus. Now that wasn't very... Interesting. <laughs> no. It sucked. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, hello. Oh. What was that, I wonder? What was that noise? Ah, invoice copy. Umbrella training facility. Dr. James Marcus. Five, five cases of the progenitor sample. December 15th, 1977. Africa Research Director Brandon Bailey. And that sounded pretty boring. Indeed. Let's open this door. Oh, what's this? It looks like a lab. Indeed it does. There's a tyrant! I'm joking, it's just flowers. <laughs> it's a flower tyrant! <laughs> this is the facility from the picture. Ah, there's Without another computer it. to turn on. Amazing. Hope it works. Oh, it does! A oh, nice operating system. Tricell researcher Miguel's journal, number one. February 19th. When I heard it was the laboratory used by Umbrella in Africa, my expectations were raised, to say the least. But when I saw it, well, it was it was a lab in the name only. I didn't know how Umbrella ever used it, and Lord knows how Tricell could possibly have any use for it. The place was abandoned long ago, Come on. so there's nothing there of any value to us. Not one piece of lab equipment remains, at least nothing that still works. I can't say I'm surprised because I half expected this. Anyway, the important thing is the progenitor virus. If we didn't need that virus for our research, there would be there would have been no need to come to this rundown umbrella facility anyway. We already have samples of the T virus, the G virus, the T Veronica virus. 
and the, even the Lost Plagas Parasite. All are connected in the Resident Evil world. We have everything mm -hmm. we need for our research. We didn't have we just didn't have that damn progenitor virus. But we finally got our hands on it. Hopefully this will give us the that much needed breakthrough in our research. I can't wait to start working on it. March seventh. I wonder who came up with the name Liquor. Oh, I wonder what they are. For those creatures. I mean when you see its long tongue, you just know it's the perfect name. Uh, that tongue could be used for something. But for <laughs> researchers like me, BOWs like liquors are just a pain in the ass. If I said liquors were too perfect, I'd probably be going too far in my praise. But they're pretty much an evolutionary dead end. There's no room for improvement. BOWs that were created using the T virus don't seem to have shown much improvement when the progenitor virus is administered. Administrated. I mean, their abilities show some slight improvements. For example, their sense of smell seems more like a, seems more or less improved. But that's all we've got so far. They're still blind as an old lady, and they're still ugly as shit. The biggest jump in their evolution seems to be their fair ability to reproduce. <laughs> I hate when things don't go according to plan, but since there's still a demand of liquors, a demand for liquors on the BOW market, I guess things aren't that bad. Can I destroy this computer now? No, I can't. Unfortunately, no. So, let's power on, on the last computer. An email to an acquaintance. Hey! I know this is sudden, but I'm going to be getting some time off soon. We've completed most of our work on the new project. Sorry, you know I can't talk about work. So, they're giving us some time off as a reward for all our hard work. All the staff are leaving tomorrow, and we'll finally be getting out of this country. I'm heading straight back to Arizona, and I can't wait to get home and see everyone. More than that, I think I'll just be happy to get away from the high and mighty Miguel guy thinks he has some sort of super genius. Miguel's a guy that sits next to me at work, and he's a good researcher and all, don't get me wrong. He's got some good ideas and is good at noticing details, but every time he opens his mouth he just goes on and on about how great he is. Jackass. You can't even begin to imagine what torture it is to hear that day, that day in and day out. I wish we made a sed sedative I could give him, but forget all that. What matters is that I should get back home within the next few days. When I get back, I'll give you a call. We gotta go out and get smashed. I could use the break. Talk to you soon, Ryan. Ryan Bragg, is that you? <laughs> Apparently it is. And that Miguel sounds like a jackass. Indeed. Oh, what's this scratch? Mm, what's this scratch? The tyrant is here. Indeed. And he's... Uh, learning to how to count to three. Considering there were three claw marks. Logan told him how to count. <laughs> I love the way we were just in sync and using the knife. Yeah. <coughs> oh, right. Forgot I was supposed to turn it with the uh, control stick. Oh, that's a lot of blood. My god. Looks like it was torn apart by animals. Not a good way to go. What does this do? I'm gonna pull it. Ah, look, oh, it's no. up there. That handsome looking thing. Yeah, kinda makes you wonder how it got there, considering that we saw it crawl before, and there's a glass wall here. So maybe it went through the air ducts or something. Yeah, I'm guessing that too. Oh, hello, you pets. Let's see. There's rats. Oh god, that rat is big and ugly. Oh wait, we can investigate these things. Yep, we can. A cage for the lab animals. B.O.W. research, I suppose. Okay, it says the same thing there. Is there a herb here? Oh, there is. Okay, it's just saying the same thing. Yeah. 
Oh, look, I got two herbs. How many? Oh, I got three herbs, actually. Yeah, I, I picked one up before and gave it to you for combination. 